Hey, what's up, Scott Balkum here. And today, well, we're with Kessler Crane and we're doing a tutorial on their new second shooter remote app for your phone that unlocks the power of the second shooter pro controller. Oh yeah. So the first thing we need to do is connect to the Wi-Fi on your controller. And if you missed how to do that in our controller configuration tutorial, we walk through it step by step, but you basically need to enable Wi-Fi on your controller. Then go to your phone and find the second shooter pro under Wi-Fi. Connect to it, and then you just need to open up your app. So once you open up the app, you will see it will initialize your device and it will complete. And now you are greeted with a very beautiful, very functional, very cool main screen. If you notice on here, we have a few things. Down here at the bottom, we have a blue Wi-Fi indicator. If it's blue, that means you have a good connection to your second shooter controller. If it's white, you're not connected. You need to go back and reconnect and then start this all over again. Down here, you have the slide, pan, and tilt. They are illuminated white. And then you also have the FIZ as well that is not illuminated white. If you had linked controllers, those would illuminate. But it's basically telling you what axis motors it has detected plugged into your controllers. So I have my three axis here on the, the, I have the pan, tilt, and the slide. And it sees that I have a slide, pan, and a tilt enabled. Down here at the bottom right-hand corner, we have a gear. The gear on every page is merely setup options for the subset of information. Now on here, you'll see it has the version of the app and you'll see down here, it has keep iPhone awake during playback. You definitely want that turned on because if it goes to sleep, it's not gonna know what to do. And down below that, we have fast mode. We talked about that in our controller configuration, and that basically enables the acceleration to be at its fastest mode. Down here at the bottom, we can also change the Wi-Fi settings. We can update the device firmware. That's right. We can now wirelessly update the firmware from the phone to the controller without hooking it up with the USB. Uh-huh, yes, please, yes. And you can also reset your device. And down here at the bottom, uh, there's release notes and you can send log files if they ever need them for support case. So click done here. Um, you'll notice down here in the bottom, we have a joystick. This joystick, watch this. Yeah, it's a joystick. Also, you have these little arrows. These are called bump buttons. If you press it, it will bump the controller a little bit in that pan or that tilt axis. So to configure that, press the settings button and you'll see here, we can reverse the orientation of the pan and here's our bump button amount. We click on bump button amount and we can go from two and a half to 20 if we really want it to go, but to show you what 20 does. So we've got, that's one bump as a long way to travel. So I would recommend that you use it for finer adjustments. So I like it at two and a half myself, and then the speed at which it's going to move. So if you set it at 100%, it's gonna go you, you, you don't wanna do that because the sound effects are horrible. Down here, we also have the same thing for vertical. We can reverse the orientation, and we can also change the vertical bump button as well. And then on the joystick, we can control how responsive it is. So if you want a linear or a logarithmic curve to how it responds to your your finger movement on there, you can control that as well. And then dead band. And dead band is quite simply, when you put your finger on the joystick, if the higher the dead band, the more you move your finger before it actually will start moving. So that basically if you if your finger moves a little bit while you're, you're holding it down, put a little dead pen in there and it won't move while your finger's on there. Uh, and then you can also set as default. You can go, we'll go back to done. We have slide right here. It's a nice little slide controller back and forth, that's kind of amazing. So what if there was an even easier and a little more fun way to move this around? What if you could use a PlayStation 4 controller? You can. It's really simple and it's a lot of fun. So the first thing you need to do is to pair your controller. So we're gonna go into our phone and we're gonna go to Bluetooth on our phone. So then we want to turn on our PlayStation controller, 
press the share button, which is also the pair button. And on your phone, it should say, hey, Scott, would you like to go ahead and pair that DualShock? And I'll say, I sure will. Thank you very much. And we are now connected. Head on back to the app. And now we can do something pretty cool. Yep. We're controlling the second shooter with a PlayStation 4 controller. So now you can have a lot of fun setting up moves this way. And guess what? It's very configurable. If you go to the app and you click on the PlayStation 4 controller at the bottom, you can see every single button is configurable. You can have it do anything you'd like. You can cycle your keyframes, you can pause, you can play, you can shift so you can go faster. You can do all of these things and you can change them however you'd like. So I don't know if you are as good of a counter as I am, but I count 10 keyframes on this app. That's right, 10 keyframes you can set up. And setting them up couldn't be easier. Set your position of your first keyframe and just simply tap the first one. You see, it came up with a one and it says, I'm keyframe number one. Pretty cool. Let's do it with our PlayStation controller. We'll just send it on down its way. And we'll go ahead and turn back and we'll come back just a little bit and set number two. Now we can go to right here. We'll set three. Oopsie, I messed up. I need to correct the first keyframe. So where is the first keyframe? Well, if you wanna find out, press one. It'll go right back to the first keyframe and it tells you there it is. Well, I wanna change this. So let's change it. Yep, that's right. So if you hold down the one, you notice it comes up with replace keyframe, delete keyframe, and delete all keyframes. So we're gonna replace the keyframe and looky there, we're back. So you can go to keyframe number two, right here, keyframe number three, and we can now set up our keyframe number four. Keyframe number four looks pretty good there. Let's go way over here like that. Keyframe four and then keyframe five, we'll go over here and we're gonna go up. Perfect, set that as keyframe. That's pretty easy setting up keyframes. So let's set up our first move. Let's go to live motion. And you can see here, we have a few configuration options. We have move time, which we could then configure to the move time that we would like. So let's set it to 16 seconds. And then we have the next feature, which is ramping. Now this is where it gets really cool. Check this out. You can see we have the curves for every axis and we can adjust these curves. So let's say we wanna speed it up. We can adjust just by moving that ramping over a little bit. And now we can see right here, our current move time is 16 seconds. Let's click calculate. It says we can now do this in 11 seconds if we would like. Well, let's say we move this over to there. Uh-oh, we've got dotted lines. What the dotted lines mean is it cannot complete the move in the amount of time that we have. So let's click calculate. It says we need 28 seconds to complete this move and it set it to 28 for you. Let's go back and find a happy medium. How about right there? Let's click calculate and we'll see we're at 12 seconds. That sounds pretty good. Let's, well, let's go to 15, why not? And you can see that's pretty powerful right there. We have a play button, which is also the pause button. We have a delay. So this is the start delay. So when it starts and it goes to the very first keyframe, it's gonna wait three seconds here and that's configurable as well. We have loop on and off. You just simply turn loop on and it will loop the move when it's done. And then setup is all of these functions where we can change all of that in one screen. Now we have down here at the bottom, a progress bar 
Let's start our first live motion move. We'll press play. It's going to keyframe one. It's going to count down on the screen, three seconds, and off it goes. It's going to keyframe two, keyframe three, keyframe four, and finally keyframe five. And now it's going to simply reverse. Keyframe four, keyframe three, keyframe two. Notice the progress bar is now counting backwards. Yep, pretty nice, pretty handy. And we can stop. So let's now try time lapse. Now we have move time, ramping, play. We have photos, we have a delay, and exposure. The move time here is the calculation of the number of photos with the exposure time and the delay built in with the ramp in there. So it's not just as fast as it can go. We can click on ramping, and you can see here it's still calculating the minimum move time based upon what it can actually do without the photos and the delays being in there, but we can change that later. So you can change your ramping just like before. We can change the number of photos. We want to do, let's say, four seconds of uh, 24 frames a second. So let's just take this to 96. And then we'll have a delay of, we'll do one second. And if we go click on setup down here, you can see our exposure is set to one second, just like it was on the screen. We have our exposure here set at half a second. So remember, you want this to be at least equal to that for exposure. So if this is one second, you need at least one second here. That way it will match up properly. And then there's delay. And then you can go down here to continuous. And if you do continuous, well, it's going to move the entire time without a shoot, move, shoot. Or we can go to shoot, move, shoot. And you see here, it has a built-in playback calculator. 24 frames a second with 96 frames will equal four seconds of clip length. Now you can see here your calculated field, you can change based upon photos, delay, or time. So you can see here we have pre and post photos. So if you wanted to take 24 frames, which would be one second before the move starts, you could program that in here, or you could type in 24 frames afterward, or 48, or however many you wanted. Also, you can choose to use an external intervalometer as well. And right here, we have test fire, making sure it works. So let's click done. We can see our move is at four minutes and 46 seconds based on 96 frames with a two second delay with a one second exposure. And we are ready to go. It's going to go all the way to the beginning and it's gonna start. Three second delay. And it's moving and then it moves, takes a photo and then it moves, takes a photo and it moves. You can see the progress bar right down here. It is progressing nicely. And we can stop at any point. That is time-lapse mode. So let's do stop motion. Slide over here and we have home. Home will take you to keyframe number one. We have auto off and auto on. What that simply means is when you fire, it will move to the next one if it's on auto on. If it's on auto off, it will make you move it to the next frame. We're gonna leave auto on because I'm a professional and that's how we do things. So right here in the middle is your snap button. Then you can move forward to the different frames in your stop motion. So we see we're here, we're at current frame one. We are taking 100 photos, but we don't wanna do 100, we wanna do 96. So we're gonna change this to 96 photos because we like working with round numbers. That will give you a four second, 24 frames per second finished product. We can go to any frame that we would like, but we're just gonna start on number one. And we have a two second exposure which we're gonna to change to a one second exposure because we're at half a second here. So all we need to do to go is click home, which we're already there and click snap. Now it automatically moved 
and it's preset. I'm ready to go now. So let me get my stop motion going. We've got our handy dandy pin. Snap. Move. Snap. Move. Snap. Move. Oh, you know what? Oh, I messed up. We need to go back. So we can go back to four. We can go back to three. That was there, that was there, that was there. Now I can retake this one. And we can go to five. Right there. And continue on. It's automatically going from there. Pretty simple. If you want to turn off auto on, now you can press your snap. Notice it says we need to go to the next frame. So we need to go to nine. And you see the counter right here. Snap. Now we need to go to the next frame. Pretty simple. Stop motion has never been more fun. Well, I, I guess it's it, it's probably been a little more fun, but this this is pretty nice. You gotta admit. Next, let's go to manual move. And it's pretty simple like before. We have our joystick on here so we can move however we want. We can also control the speed. So if you change the max speed, let's change it to 50%. Now it won't move as fast. So now max speed is only 50%. And then we have damping. We can change this, give it a nice little ramp up and down. and you can move just like before. You can also, so set your max speed to say 10, and then we'll pick up our PlayStation controller, and now we can operate it at max speed of only 10, and we're just doing a simple manual move. We can also use our joystick, and we can control a very simple Nice little two axis move. We're gonna throw in a third axis. Look at that. Very nice. A lot of control, PlayStation 4 controller, or you can just use right here as well. It's very easy to do moves with the Kessler Crane Second Shooter Remote App. So as you can see, it's very easy to use the Kessler Second Shooter Remote to program simple and very complicated moves using up to 10 keyframes and a PlayStation 4 controller all within this little phone and your Second Shooter Pro controller. Talk about unlocking the power. It's impressive. And if you have any problems along the way, head out to KesslerCrane.com Click over to the support section. You'll find frequently asked questions as well as a way to submit a trouble ticket should you have any problems. You can also contact them via email or phone during business hours, and they're more than happy to help you. Trust me, these people are some of the best in the industry, and they love helping you, and they love seeing what you create. Because let's face it, the power of this and the power of you, you're going to create something amazing, and we can't wait to see it. So from me and everyone at Kessler Crane, we thank you for purchasing your Second Shooter Pro and all of your other great Kessler gear. We know you're gonna do amazing things with it. Thank you.